Hello again. We are working now on Project 7, and this is an instructional video on where to go and what to do. If you go to your Blackboard and download the two files attached to this particular um, assignment, you're going to get these two pictures. One of them you're going to want to save to a JPEG and import into Painter as easily as dragging and dropping the paper painter. The other one is a step-by-step -step, step instructional guide on how you would paint this if you actually had paint, which you don't have, you have digital paint, but it's a good uh, guide to go off of. So we're going to start with this item, which is two units by three units high, and generally uh, we go ahead and build this at four feet by six feet. So we're going to make it at four inches by six inches. On this item, we're going to paint this whole um, pretty image right here, and we're trying to make it look as close to this as we possibly can. So we're going to start with this, which is a scanned JPEG of this bottom section of the page. And what that'll do for us is allow us to make a color set for this a color set library for this particular assignment. So we're going to go to File, New. We're going to go ahead and leave this at 300 dpi and we're going to make it 6 inches wide. I'm sorry, we're going to make it 4 inches wide and 6 inches high. Make sure that this says inch, inches and not pixels. And let's go ahead and name this Project 7. Okay, so now we have something that looks very similar in size and shape to our current assignment. We are going to minimize this, but we don't actually need them both open at the same time. So we're going to go to our color swatches. We're going to go to color set libraries. I'm going to turn off the color set libraries that I have open. And I'm going to start a new color set. And I'm going to call this color set Project 7. And it's going to pop in a color. Um, not necessarily not necessarily the color you want it to pop in, but it's going to pop in a color. So you're going to click on that color, and then that will make sure that you're in that color set library. And then I'm going to hit the D key for dropper, and I'm going to go ahead and grab each of these colors and hit the plus symbol right here, which will add those colors to our color set library as we go along. I'm going to add them all first and then rename them. And I can rename them when I'm done, if I'd like to. Now some of them are very similar, which is why you might want to rename them. And all you have to do is right click and go to rename color and then type in a name. I am actually not going to do all of these colors because some of them are not as useful as you might think they are. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this for right now and start on the actual project for you guys. So we're going to start here. I'm going to maximize this window. And the first instruction is on your sheet is to scumble the background with texture. And what scumble means is to take two colors and combine them together. I'm actually going to take this mid-tone color and fill the background with it so I don't have any white permeating my color combination. Now you can use several different kinds of brushes for this particular technique, but we want it to be smooth at the end. So I'm going to choose to use oils. You could also use acrylic, one that doesn't have an impasto effect. You could use a gouache. You could use a palette knife. Actually, palette knife sounds fun. Let's use a palette knife. That sounds fun. Okay, so I'm going to choose my lighter yellow color, and I'm going to bring my resaturation up from zero because obviously I'd used this brush before. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the re, uh, re reset button on my on my palette knife, and that's going to put my all my settings back to normal. So I'm going to go ahead and. <laughs> throw down some color. I'm going to get make my palette knife bigger because this is a little too small for me to deal with right now. Also, I'd like to note that if I get my brush really light, if I put my palette knife very lightly, I get kind of a blender already. 
And that's because my resaturation is so low, it's only at 14. So I'm gonna grab the red, the red color. Now I wanna point out that here is a little bit of an issue. This color is not quite the same as this color over here, right? That's very brown and this color is very red. Now, there are a couple reasons that could have happened. I could have not sampled it very well. I could have done a multiple multitude of things. But I'm gonna go ahead and go to my color picker and try and get my color a little redder. And I feel like that is a better representation, maybe a little darker, is a better representation of the color that is on my example. And I want you guys to match as close as you can to what they have painted color-wise. So I'm gonna get some red in there, and then I'm gonna take my resaturation to zero, and I'm gonna start blending. And now this particular brush is a little bit hard to use because it doesn't really want to tilt. See how it wants to stay straight up and down? So if I want something that's not perfectly vertical, if I want to tilt it, what I really need to do is tilt my entire canvas. Oh, my hotkey isn't on, so you can't see how I did that, but I held Control and Alt. And just like when you hold Control and Alt, one moment. Sorry about that. Now, uh, when we're blending, this is a very big blender, and you can see that I'm getting very big spots, and some of that is desirable, and some of that is not. I don't want it to be too big, as you can see here. We've got quite a bit of smaller spots in our picture, so we wanna replicate that. So I'm gonna go ahead and resaturate my brush a little bit. Oh, I didn't mean to change brushes. I meant to just resaturate my brush. And while I still have this color in my hand, I'm gonna hit this button and add it so that we're using that color. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that other color so I'm not tempted to use again. I'm also gonna remove that first color that got put in there just because it existed. Woo! Because that is not what I wanted to happen. Okay. Uh, as far as tilting my um, screen, when I hit Control and Alt and slide my pen to move it up, if I hit Control and Alt and roll the scroll wheel on my mouse, I actually tilt my canvas. You know, fun things. I am actually going to switch to my oil brush. Uh, one, because it's very smooth. Two, because I it's round and I'm getting these very not round uh, pieces with my, with the palette knife. Uh, again, um, I don't think I made this completely clear before, but you do not have to use the brushes that I'm using. You don't have to do any of the things exactly the same as I'm doing them. I just want you guys to explore a little bit and we're looking for a scumble mixture. So the end result needs to be similar. Uh, if you want to use something with impasto, you could, just not something with too much. And the idea is that you guys just reach the same result. So here I'm gonna start blending and that's gonna make a much better effect than the other one, than the other effect was just a few minutes ago. By using the oil brush to get us some really solid circle shapes down, when I'm using the palette knife to blend, I'm using it very lightly, and I don't have to work as hard to get it to blur. So I'm getting just kind of a blurry circle effect instead of, instead of trying to really rub out all of the shaping that I already have. So I'm going to do that for a second. And then once I do, we're going to move on to our next step. You want this to be on a separate layer than your other, uh, than the rest of your project. And just like our other projects, we're gonna want them to be separate and well kept and in order and that kind of thing. So I did this on my canvas layer and it's fine for you to do that on your canvas layer as well. Uh, it does mean, however, that you can't rename it. So now I'm gonna go to layer one. I'm gonna leave my canvas layer alone and I'm gonna move to my next instructional step which is cartooning the brick. 
and then we're going to scumble that with some other colors and we're going to do some highlight and shadow. So the measurements for these are 18 inches by 9 inches high. And what that means, let's grab out our rulers. Uh, ruler. Okay. So here's our good friend, the ruler again. If this is a foot, nine inches is three quarters of that inch. So I'm going to click on that at nine inches, and I'm going to click again at 18 inches, quote unquote. You can't see my uh, quotes. But I'm going to click again at 18 inches, which is actually one and a half inches. I'm going to do the same thing vertically, except I'm just going to go at nine inch increments. So three quarters inch of an inch, one half, two and a quarter. three. It's a little difficult to get my palette knife back there. It's very confusing in the mouse. Um, three, four, three and three quarters, four and a half, five and a quarter, and then there'd be one at six, but we don't have one there. Uh, so now is a good time to break out with your, um, uh, to break out with your straight line pen or brush tool. Now I will say that we don't really use the cartoon lines. Well, we do. We do. We do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make them in pencil. Pencil. I make them with a number two pencil. And if we look at our drawing, there's a full brick on top and then a half brick under it. So I'm going to go ahead and change my color to gray, or black rather, one of the black colors from our palette. And there are a couple things I can do. I can click to start up here, and I can use my straight line tool. I can click to start up here, click down here and click across and see how I got a little bit high there I want to make sure I'm very careful not to do that now when I get to the end here I can I have a couple options I can exit and go back into the line tool so that I'm making my first line again my first click again or that was again a little too long I want to be careful not to I want to be careful not to I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because this is a little, a little hard to see from far away. I'm going to be careful not to, oh, my, my pen is being a little weird, but I want to be careful not to move it too far to one side or the other. Um, so I can reset it again and again by going up there. What I can also do is save myself a little bit of time by coming out here and back in. So I'm come out and back in. And that is three large uh, stones. And there will be one more small stone. And then the next stone goes all the way across. So I'm going to come out here and go to this side. And then I'm going to go all the way across. And I'm going to do the next horizontal line all the way across as well. That saves me just a little bit of time. So I'm going to click back and forth to reset my line. And I'm going to get this little line right here. I'm going to try a little harder to be careful. Now, if you hold that click down, you can uh, prevent it from getting, from sticking in the wrong place. Both of those, however, I started in a little bit of an off place. So not surprised that I surprised I ended there. So there's a short one there. So that means oops, delete. Reset my tool. Straight down. That means that oops, reset my tool. That means that over here we have one. And now instead of drawing new guidelines, because I'm just gonna end up deleting them. I'm just going to move this over. This also means that when I move it, I can see whether or not I forgot to make a line or not. So I'm going to go 
and start a new line. And if I'm really careful, I don't have to reset. I can move along another line I've already drawn. And over three quarters of an inch and reset my line and go ahead and strip that line. I'm going to undo both of those and try again. Okay. Good thing I have a control Z button, right? Okay. I'm going to take those off the table. I'm going to do the same with my horizontal lines. I'm going to hit control S right now because I'm a little scared of painter crashing. There's a lot of guidelines happening right now. There's a lot of lineage happening right now. And it's been pretty unstable today. Okay. And last but not least. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have our specific shapes, these specific shapes should be exactly the same time size. So after we cartoon our brick, we are going to fill it with two grays. Now we can grab our magic wand tool and see what this does. I'm going to grab our gray, I'm going to make it larger, and I'm going to grab the oil bristle tool. Oops. And I'm going to put it back on freehand. gray. It does not look gray. Oh, our layer is set to gel and we don't want it to be. Now that is not doing what I want it to do, so I am going to try again. Oh. So instead I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to select I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and select, and after I've selected, I'm going to hold the shift, shift key and add to that selection. Holding the shift key will add to the selection after I've made the selection. Holding the shift key beforehand will force it to be a perfect. Oh no! I accidentally clicked out, so I can hit Control Z in order to fix it. Take, oh, there I did it again. Add a little bit there and make sure I've got everything. Once I do, I'm going to grab the bucket tool and I'm going to dump gray inside of it. Once again, I'm still on gel, so I'm going to move back to default and hit Control D to undo the selection. Now that looks really weird because it's right up against our gray background, but believe me, it's a different gray. So I'm going to grab our bristle tool and I'm going to lock transparency so that I can't paint on the canvas below. So that's our canvas underneath, and this is the gray we put on top, and now I can't paint. Oh, nope, Control Z, Control Z. I just covered up my lines. My lines are on that layer. I don't wanna, I don't wanna cover them up. So I am going to select, reselect? Yeah, reselect, and I've got my selection again. I'm gonna make a new layer and dump gray on that layer. Just so I'm not as confusing, I'm gonna dump the light gray on that layer. I have to turn lock transparency off though, otherwise I'll never be able to dump anything anywhere. There we go. So now I have my lines on a different layer. I'm going to go ahead and pull that layer, click and drag, and drop it right on top of the other layer so I can see them. This isn't particularly necessary, but it's, it's fine to do. I'm going to lock transparency again this time and actually work on my... do the same thing where I just kind of go ahead and dab some of that darker color all over. Oh. Hey now. I didn't lock transparency. Lock. Nope. I said lock. Thank you. I'm going to do the same speckle stone texture. way across. 
is going to be very similar to the background. I'm going to go ahead and pause and do what I did before, speckle this down and combine it. Okay, so I don't think that has enough variation in it. So I grabbed a middle color just from that scumble to add some more color, some more variation in color to our entire scumble. And I want to remind you when you're blending to go ahead and be careful when you get close to the edges. If you pull in from the edge, you're going to get some of the orange from the layers below. So when you get close to an edge, you should push back. Also, let me undo a few steps. You should turn this button off, the pick up underlying layers button, because that is picking up some of the orange from the layer below, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and unclick that so that it doesn't. Now I pull in from the edge pretty much just black or white could possibly come in on your edge. It depends on your background color. But that way I'm not pulling in orange from our background all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and just mix that middle color back in a little bit. And once again, I'm going to save before we move on. And I am going to grab a darker color and use my bristle, bristle butt brush. And I'm going to knock a darker color in there. It just doesn't seem like there's a very high contrast between the three colors that are on the surface. I'm going to do that quite quickly. Grab my palette knife and gently brush that, blend that out. And again, you don't want to erase or reduce all of your all of your previous colors. You just want to make sure that you get some more variation in the size, the color, and the texture. You do not want that variation to be that really weirdo sideways texture like that right there. So one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm keeping my touch really, really light in order to keep it really, really easy going. You don't want it to look too much like circles. You still want them to look a little blended. Here we go. It's looking better. Okay. Not too fuzzy. Kind of fuzzy. We're going to go with that. Then we're gonna step four is next, and we're gonna do a bevel highlight and shadow. Uh, it doesn't look like this is in. This is actually not in your instructions, but I'm going to add a step since we are almost at the end of uh, the first video. Uh, before we start highlight and shadow, this is a little too flat. It's just too flat, and even it's too flat in the instructions. So you're gonna create another layer. So you can label your gray stone layer as stone and your outline layer or cartoon layer. Let's call it cartoon. And your next layer, I want you to take off preserve transparency. I want you to label this spatter, uh, spatter one. And I want you to grab a couple colors and go to your airbrush layer. Your airbrush brushes, sorry. And uh, I want you to grab pepper spray, make it nice and large, nice and large. And I want you to just gently, oh, no, nope, that's not what I wanted. I'm sorry. Silly me. Um, I want variable spatter. I want variable spatter. See, we got this big got this big dotty effect. I want that big dotty effect on this gray brick. And I want you to do it on just on the gray brick. And do it in the dark color, the light color, and the gray color. Okay. Now I want you
want you to go to the stone layer and right click on it and say select layer content. And I want you to go to select inverse selection. This is selecting everything except for where there's gray stone. Go to the spatter and hit control X and that'll remove all your overspray. There is no need to be careful because we can remove it very easily. Make a new layer and call it spatter 2. And I want you to take it and put it between the stone and canvas layers. We're going to use a different uh, airbrush now. We're going to use the coarse spray, which is up here. And we are going to use a very similar tactic. You're going to use the three colors that were in the background. One, two, oh, I didn't change. I need to undo that because I didn't change to a lighter color. Two, there we go, that's much better. Three, nope. Once again, didn't stick. Okay. Now we're going to add a gray to that background. Okay, that gives us a nice little softer texture. And I'm going to take both of those layers and I'm going to knock the, their opacity down to about 45%, maybe less, about 38%, until it looks good. And then I'm going to go back to spatter one and I'm going to go to the photo pens and I'm going to go to blur. And then I'm just going to paint on that blur technique as if I could paint blurriness. Um, my blur tool has been set to very low, so I'm going to bring it up to about 50%. Yours is probably already set real high, so I wouldn't worry about changing it necessarily. Um, here you go. Nice blurry spatter on there. I'm going to go ahead and add some I'm going to go back to coarse batter, and I'm going to grab some of the medium gray, and I'm going to add a little bit of that to this blurry coarse batter layer. That'll just give our stone textures a little more variability. Now I'm adding those spatters and I'm kind of spattering them over into that area, so I want to make sure to do the same thing I did before, which is go to stone, select layer content, select inverse selection go to my spatter layer and delete it. And you can see on the little uh, icon that that really changed. If you didn't see it, you can rewind the vid video and look at it. And that looks a lot better than that, right? That's very flat and this is much more interesting. So we're going to go with this. Uh, and that is all we're going to do for this video. Your next video is going to be highlight, shade, and shadow. I'm going to save, and I'll see you next time.